Thanks for joining us today on City Talk. I'm Maria Sorreo, and joining us as he does each and every month is our mayor, David Bradley. Mayor, thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely happy to be here on this beautiful day here at Point Vicente Interpretive Center. That's right, and this is also the site for Well of a Day, which has been on hiatus for the last two years, but we are back next the, the month. The whales have not been on hiatus. No, they've, they've still been, been here. They've been coming every year. <laughs> they have. Fortunately, we get to come back this year on April 9th to uh, watch them pass by and celebrate a whale of a day for the first time in three years. So we're excited to be back. So excited. It was virtual last year because yep. of the pandemic, of course. But no, we are back. Tell us what some of the uh, residents can expect this year. So we're going to be back to doing the uh, our normal celebration for Whale of the Day. So there'll be things for the kids to do. There'll be things for adults to do. Unfortunately, this year, we're not going to have the lighthouse open for tours. Correct. But we are working with the U.S. Coast Guard to uh, look at what we can do in a a municipal federal government partnership for the go forward plan mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, Point Vicente Lighthouse, as well as looking up at repurposing the Battery Baker uh, land up uh, on the Civic Center property um, up at the top of the hill. So uh, both of those things are coming together nicely. Uh, the Coast Guard is a great partner with us mm -hmm. as we try to work together to uh, to utilize both of these beautiful pieces of property. So everyone come out on April, April 9th, 9th yes. for uh, Whale of the Day. It's going to be a great opportunity uh, to get the community together again, start reopening up from uh, COVID uh, pandemic. Absolutely. And I know the Lighthouse is one of your favorite places. I love the Lighthouse. Isn't it beautiful? It is absolutely beautiful. Hopefully we can get people back uh, able to take tours of the lighthouse. Yes, Be we're able to it. see the Coast Guard Museum mm -hmm. at the base of the lighthouse. A lot of people don't even know that there is a museum, a museum there yes. uh, that is operated by the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Mm -hmm. um, a really interesting ode to the Coast Guard uh, legacy here in Palos Verdes and within the L.A. area. So. Um, exciting to get that reopened. It's a great location. And here at PVIC, we have the Lighthouse Lens on display. The and lens, yes. yes. and I know that the city is planning uh, more improvements for this, uh, this location. Tell us about that. So as part of the uh, um, the 50th year celebration, we really hope to uh, be able to uh, do a ode to uh, the former Marine Land property. Yes. That uh, we will be able to get Bubbles, the former whale, at the entrance to Marine Land. That's right. Um, refurbished. She has seen some challenges over the last 50 years, but we're going to get Bubbles repurposed. Hopefully we'll find a great place to uh, showcase Bubbles mm -hmm. out in front of Point Vicente, uh, the Interpretive Center, and uh, show that integration of the history of the uh, city. And of course, so many people rem remember Marine Land and really love I that statue. Do. So yeah. Absolutely. Now we're going to dive into some bigger issues um, the city council talked about in March, one of them being the approved construction and funding contracts for Ladera Linda Community Park yep. Project. I know this is one of the biggest public works projects in the city. Tell us a little bit more about that. So Ladera Linda has been a long time coming. It was a former school site that the city took over. The school site was built in the 60s and it was kind of a uh, a quick reaction site. It was not really built with a 50-year life in mind. So it had been condemned oh, about 10, 15 years ago because it had just fallen into ill repair. Uh, the city had been looking at what to do with that site for the last seven, eight years. We finally come together. We have a plan. Uh, the architect has drawn up some beautiful designs for it to take it advantage of the property, its scenic over look. So next Friday, we will be doing the groundbreaking for the Ladera Linda project. It's uh, about a 15 to 20 month project. Okay. So within the next two years, we will have a beautiful community center, a community park uh, there at Ladera Linda to serve the east side of the uh, of Rancho Palos Verde. So it's very exciting uh, that we are finally to the place where we're going to move dirt yes. next Friday and get this moving. And People love that. It's going to be a beautiful site, and the the dilapidated school that's there currently, uh, we're going to be able to replace for something for everyone. We can never really have too many parks, so. Absolutely not. And, you know, I think uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about a little bit later is uh, bike riding and what some of our uh, younger citizens can do. That's right. Well, we could jump into that now okay. because that's really such a huge topic because, like you said, so many people love that. Right. So tell us about that. 
So at Tuesday night city council meeting, mm -hmm. we had an item on our agenda to uh, allow a pilot project to look at allowing uh, children to ride bikes in our parks. Right. Up until this week, we had actually had a moratorium and we're still concerned about the safety aspect okay. about having young bike riders and maybe less mobile uh, folks on the trails and how we make sure that it's done safely. But we do want to provide a safe place for kids to learn how to ride a bike, to ride a skateboard, to ride mm -hmm. a scooter, to do things that kids need to do. Get Absolutely. outside, uh, get some sunshine, and you know, do the things kids need to do as opposed to playing video games and staying indoors all the time. Um, the pandemic was, you know, very insular and things like that so yeah. now we really want to get our kids out in the community enjoying the parks so we're doing a pilot project at the uh, civic center mm -hmm. at uh, hess park and at eastview park and Great. allowing uh, bike riding there and we're going to see how it works and we'll see how we can uh, modify it but it's kind of a crawl walk run let's test it let's figure out what works let's figure out what doesn't work and uh, do the best we can to be able to serve all the constituency within the uh, within the city now do you have to renovate any of the parks or just leave them the way they are for right this? now it's going to be left the way they okay. are and then uh, depending on that we could be uh, looking at putting in uh, specific bike paths okay uh, separate from walking paths, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to look at what makes sense and you know where the usage is, where the issues are, and how we can do that uh, best way, and with the most fiscal responsibility. Of course, absolutely. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the uh, traffic signal. And I know this is always very important to talk about. Um, there's a newly installed traffic signal at yes. the intersection of PV Drive South and PV Drive East. And the city council voted to redesign the light. Yes. So tell us about that and why they did that. So we, um, the last council actually voted to implement a light at the corner of Palace Verdes Drive South and Palace Verdes Drive East. Mm -hmm. And the intent of that is to provide a traffic break um, all along PV Drive South. Um, there was a lot of debate on which was the right intersection. Um, the intersection where it was put in was seen to be the number one intersection. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the aesthetics of the standard Caltrans traffic signal that was put in was not what everybody would like. Okay. And we all understand that um, after we saw it, it's one of those things is you know it when you see it. Yeah. Uh, well, we know we didn't like it when we saw it. Um, but the thing we want to do is turn it on. It's been installed and sitting dark for about two and a half months now. Uh, we're gonna turn it on in the next week or so and see if it meets its intended purpose of providing traffic breaks and controlling traffic along PV Drive South to allow it to be a safer corridor, corridor mm -hmm. between the PV Drive East and uh, Portuguese Bend. Um, in parallel with that, we're gonna be looking at redesigning it and trying to get to the minimum impact. Cause I know I come down PV Drive East sure. and you know, sit there, yep. you see the signal, blocking your view of Catalina. Of course. <laughs> Never the intent of what we were going after. So right. we're trying to get the minimum visual impact to increase the safety along that corridor um, because we really want people to be able to make a safe left turn off of Forestall Drive. Yes. Um, so, and Yacht Harbor Drive and all of that along there, uh, which uh, during a high traffic area could be very difficult. Yeah, which is always the intent is to think about safety, of right. course. So. so so we're gonna turn it on, we're gonna test it, we're gonna see what works um, as we redesign it. So uh, okay. we're gonna get some actual uh, quantitative uh, information to be able to uh, inform our future decisions. Okay, now this month in March, there were two important public workshops. One addressed the city's council's goals. The other focused on funding a new civic center, which yep. is exciting. Share the highlights from these workshops, which residents can view on the city's website. Sure, so uh, the goal is very important to me mm -hmm. and it's something that's near and dear to me. We're trying to do goals a little bit differently this year. And in the past, uh, in my opinion, we've had too many detailed goals. So we had over 80, two goals that were city council agreed to. I really think if you have 82 goals, you have no goals. It's a um, lot. So you need to really get those down into more specific things. So this year we're trying to reduce that into eight to 10 major goals with multiple steps along those to get to the, and these are aspirational goals. These are not 
general business, you know, mm -hmm. issue permits, you know, do the things that the city has to do. So these are more aspirational goals for the city and where we want to see the city go. We're uh, working with staff to come up with those goals and work with the committees and the commissions to come up with the major goals to move the city forward into our second 50 years of being a city. Okay, and then of course the new Civic Center, which is very exciting. So the new Civic Center, mm -hmm. yes, uh, we have hired a uh, professional project manager to help with the Civic Center. That was one of the lessons learned we got from Ladera Lynn, that we probably didn't hire a professional project manager soon enough to help us guide us through that. Okay. Um, so we're also looking at how to fund the Civic Center. So we're looking at uh, multiple different ways of funding it. So uh, there will be uh, most likely some public pri private partnership aspects to it, some public funding aspects to it, um, even some capital market uh, funding aspects, aspects to it. But we had a recent workshop, uh, I believe we have one or two more uh, workshops with the public right. to show them the different options that we have for funding uh, something like the Civic Center. So it's exciting. Um, it is. What's the response been so far? It's First been workshop. So the first workshop we had, I think I was told, I unfortunately wasn't able to attend, uh, six uh, citizens uh, attended in person. Okay. I don't know how many people were online. We did get an amazing response to the tours of the of course. Of the new Civic Center site, yeah. which we opened up to the former Nike missile sites. They were able to go down to the front area of the Battery Baker area. It's amazing. Um, so if people are getting some of the history of the city, right. history of the site up there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the key components as we develop the Civic Center is the historic aspect of the World War II batteries that were there, the Nike missile batteries that were there, and how we integrate that into an overall master plan for the new Civic Center, which is going to be lovely. Unfortunately, you know, city staff today are in uh, 1950s vintage barracks they are. and office buildings, yes. never meant for what they're currently being used for. So we hope to be able to uh, give city staff and the city hmm. a world-class uh, facility to work in and help move the city into our second 50 years. And while keeping some of the history there, which I think is so important. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Okay, um, at the March 15th City Council meeting, there was a public protest hearing regarding the city's revised contract with EDCO. I know that involves residential rate increases due to the new state requirements. What happened at the hearing and what do you want EDCO customers to know? So yeah, we never want to see rates being raised. Uh, unfortunately, EDCO, when we renegotiated their new contract, there was the additional household organic mandate from the state, which didn't come with funding. So EDCO has to now take our household organic waste in addition to the green waste and recycle mm. that. There was an additional cost to that. Uh, fuel prices have dramatically increased for EDCO. Yeah. Um, as well as recyclables that they have to sell to fund that program have dramatically come down in value. Um, internationally, you've probably read that uh, some countries that had been taking some of our recyclers, cy recyclables, like India and China and some other countries around the world, have really reduced the amount of imports that they've been taking. So the cost of the recyclables cyclable program has dramatically increased. So all that together um, ended up with a rate increase for our residents. Unfortunate as that was, we negotiated as hard as we could with ESCO. Mm -hmm. We think ESCO is still providing a good service to the city. So we didn't necessarily want to change haulers uh, when we renegotiated the contract. And we did look at benchmarking ourselves against other cities between the city staff, council, and our consultant, we think we got a good deal. Unfortunately, it did go in the wrong direction and was an increase. But I think it's so important to talk about issues like that because people always wonder, why are the prices going up? Exactly. You know, so to explain that and say, well, you know, it's ecological issues, things right. like that. It's, it's super important, I think. No, it is. And it's like everything is, yeah. you know, on the surface, it looks simple. Yeah. I mean, you peel back that and, you know, there's multiple layers of the Always. onion. And we were really trying to get the best deal and the best value for our citizens. And they need EDCO, so. Absolutely. You know, we all do. Um, You named your first honoree in March, and that was an amazing RPV resident and legendary bird rest. Your yep. Ann Lynch, tell us about Ann. So Ann has been doing her work for years here in the city. Right. And it was really exciting that we were able to honor 
Ms. Lynch for her bird rescue yeah. endeavor. So she's been doing that for years. I mean, it's always exciting as a mayor where we can recognize folks within the community that are really paying dividends and yes. really getting out there and helping. So Anne was our first one that we were able to recognize for her years of volunteer work in helping the uh, birds of the community and rescue. It was fun to do that. It's one of those things as being mayor is one of the really fun parts of being mayor. Absolutely. You recognize people like And that. she's always at well of a day. She is. So and we will I see her right here. I hope she will be here Absolutely. on the night. I, I can't imagine that she won't be here. Uh, but yeah, so whale of a day uh, will be uh, will be an uh, opportunity to meet her and uh, and say hello to her for those that uh, are here. Now, what do you most look forward to at Well of a Day? I look forward to the community. Yeah. I mean, it's just getting everybody together. It's seeing the multiple <laughs> generations between, uh, you know, some of our senior citizens to our elementary age kids. Yeah. And it's really across the demographic lines. So it's fun to get the community together, mm -hmm. see everybody, renew those friendships and see everyone from the community. RPV is a little bit of a challenge geographically if you look at how the city's laid out. So when we have these abilities to get the entire city together, it's so important mm -hmm. to uh, to get everybody together. And we have to remind everybody they can park for free at the RPV City Hall. So. And there will be a shuttle bus That's for, right. um, for uh, PV Transit. We'll yes. be running a shuttle service. Um, another one of the things that the city provides is... Uh, um, is the Peninsula Traffic Service. So we're one of the cities that uh, contribute to that. That's right. So April 9th, come out here. We're all going to be here for sure. Before we wrap up, any other activities you would like to share with us, Mayor? No, it's just, well, I say no, and then I start talking. <laughs> I, yeah, so... You know, the city is really coming out of uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we're uh, trying to uh, open the city hall up for people to come in. We're trying to do it as safe as possible. Sure. I mean, we are not done with the pandemic, but we hopefully have it mitigated. Yeah. Uh, we're really trying to um, open up the city. Whale of a day, hopefully uh, the 4th of July. Yes. We'll have uh, the uh, ice skating rink back at city hall um, in December. In so all of those things we're really trying to uh, bring the city back together. Uh, some really cool projects that we're working on. Ladera Linda, we're talking about groundbreaking next Friday. Yep. The Civic Center uh, redevelopment. And then we're also working with Portuguese Bend. Um, uh, next Friday, I believe uh, Congressman Ted Liu will be coming out to take a look at the Portuguese Bend landslide, uh, which is the fastest moving landslide in North America. Um, one of those distinctions in the city we don't want to have. Um, but he will be out touring it, and uh, we're looking uh, to see how we can best fund the remediation of the landslide um, for our residents over on that side of the hill. Um, so we're looking at uh, federal uh, monies, state mm -hmm. monies, county monies, uh, city monies. We're trying to have a, uh, a a group of the willing to try to figure out how to solve Portuguese Bend. Um, and there's uh, numerous issues there. But we've also hired a project manager to start overseeing that because, once again, that's going to be a major multi-pronged process it is. that we need to get uh, and it's, resolved. You know, it's been such a big challenge for so long. It. For over 50 years, we've yeah. seen it. Um, and sometimes we see little movement, and yeah. other times, like right now, we see major movement where it is multiple inches per year. Um, the repaving of PV Drive South continues to be one of the largest uh, continual line items in the city budget as we continue have to repair the road there. Well, Mayor, we are keeping you busy in the city, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. But it's fun. It's Good. great being out here in the community. It is, and great being out here at PVIC. Of course, a beautiful day. Uh, Thank you for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. Fantastic. Thank you very much for having me, and I look forward to next month. Yes, next month and well of a day, both. Absolutely. All right, and that will do it for today's show. Thank you for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time on City Talk.